Hi, and welcome back. This is Kristen on our journey through the Bible, one chapter at a time. Thank you so much for joining me. If you haven't already done it, like my videos and subscribe. And if you're on this journey with me for the long haul, we're going to the end all the way, chapter to or cover to cover. And um, I would love to have you with me and comment too. Let me know what God puts on your heart. But you can also click for notifications. It'll let you know when I put up the next video. Simple as that. We're in Leviticus right now, going into chapter 25 and talking about the Jubilee year and how God set up everything so fairly just to account for everybody. And well, let's just jump right in. And the Lord spoke to Moses on Mount Sinai saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When you come into the land which I give you, then the land shall keep a Sabbath to the Lord. Six years you shall sow your field, and six years you shall prune your vineyard and gather its fruit. But in the seventh year there shall be a Sabbath of solemn rest for the land, a Sabbath to the Lord. You shall neither sow your field nor prune your vineyard, and what grows of its own accord of your harvest, you shall not reap, nor gather the grapes of your untended vine. For it is a year of rest for the land, and the Sabbath produce of the land shall be food for you. For you, your males and female servants, your hired man, the stranger who dwells within you. For your livestock and the beasts that are in your land, all its produced, produce shall be for food and you shall count seven sabbaths of years for yourself seven times seven years and the time of the seven sabbaths of years shall be to you 49 years then you shall cause the trumpet of the jubilee to sound on the 10th day of the seventh month on the day of atonement you shall make trumpet to sound throughout all your land and you shall consecrate the fiftieth year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land to all its inhabitants. It shall be a jubilee for you and each of you shall return to its possession and each of you shall return to his family. That fiftieth year shall be a jubilee to you. In it you shall neither sow nor reap that grows of its own accord nor gather the grapes of your untended vine for it is the jubilee it shall be holy to you and you shall eat its produce from the field in this year of jubilee each of you shall return to his possession and if you sell anything to your neighbor or buy from your neighbor's hand you shall not oppress one another according to the number of years after the jubilee you shall buy from your neighbor and according to the number of years of crops, he shall sell to you. According to the multitude of years, you shall increase its price. And according to the fewer number of years, you shall diminish its price. For he sells to you according to the number of the years of the crops. Therefore, you shall not oppress one another, but you shall fear your God, for I am the Lord your God. So you shall observe my statutes and keep my judgments and perform them, and you will dwell in the land in safety. Then the land will yield its fruit, and you will eat your fill and dwell there in safety. And if you say, what shall we eat in the seventh year, since we shall not sow nor gather in our produce, then I will command my blessing on you in the sixth year and it will bring forth produce enough for three years. And you shall sow in the eighth year and eat old produce until the ninth year, until its produce comes in, you shall eat of the old harvest. The land shall not be sold permanently, for the land is mine. For you are strangers and sojourners with me. And in all the land of your possession, you shall grant redemption of the land. If one of your brethren becomes poor and has sold some of his possession, and if his redeeming relative comes to redeem it, then he may redeem what his brother sold. 
or if the man has no one to redeem it, but he himself becomes able to redeem it. Then let him count the years since its sale and restore the remaining, the remainder to the man to whom he sold it, that he may return to his possession. But if he is not able to have it restored to himself, then what was sold shall remain in the hand of him who bought it until the year of Jubilee. And in the Jubilee, it shall be released and he shall return to his possession. If a man sells a house in a walled city, then he may redeem it within a whole year after it is sold. Within a full year, he may redeem it. But if it is not redeemed within the space of a full year, then the house in the walled city shall belong permanently to him who bought it throughout his generations. It shall not be released in the Jubilee. However, the houses of villages which have no wall around them, they shall be counted as the fields of the country. They may be redeemed and they shall be released in the Jubilee. Nevertheless, the cities of the Levites and the houses in the cities of their possession, the Levites may redeem at any time. And if a man per purchases a house from a Levite, then the house that was sold in the city of his possession shall be released in the Jubilee for the houses in the cities of the Levites are their possession among the children of Israel. But the field of the common land of their cities may not be sold for it is their perpetual possession. If one of your brethren becomes poor and falls into poverty among you, then you shall help him like a stranger or a sojourner that he may live with you. Take no usury or interest from him, but fear your God that your brother may live with you. You shall not lend him your money for usury or nor lend him your food as at a profit. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt to give you the land of Canaan and to be your God. And if one of your brethren who dwells by you becomes poor and sells himself to you, you shall not compel him to serve as a slave. As a hired servant and a sojourner, he shall be with you and shall serve you until the year of the Jubilee. And then he shall depart from you, he and his children with him and shall return to his own family. He shall return to the possession of his fathers, for they are my servants, whom I brought out of the land of Egypt. They shall not be sold as slaves. You shall not rule over him with rigor, but you shall fear your God. And as for your male and female slaves, whom you may have from the nations that are around you, from them you may buy male and female slaves. Moreover, you may buy the children of the strangers who dwell among you and their families who are with you, which they beget in your land, and they shall become your property. And you may take them as an inheritance for your children after you to inherit them as a possession. They shall be your permanent slaves. But Regarding your brethren, the children of Israel, you shall not rule over one another with rigor. Now, if a sojourner or stranger close to you becomes rich, and one of your brethren who dwells by him becomes poor and sells himself to the stranger or sojourner close to you, or to a member of the stranger's family, after he is sold, he may be redeemed again one of his brothers may redeem him or his uncle or his uncle's son may redeem him or anyone who is near of kin to him in his family may redeem him or if he is able he may redeem himself thus he shall reckon with him who bought him the price of his release shall be according to the number of years from the year that he was sold to him until the year of jubilee 
it shall be according to the time of a hired servant for him. If there are still many years remaining, according to them, he shall repay the price of the redemption from the money with which he was bought. And if there remain but few years until the year of Jubilee, then he shall reckon with him, and according to his years, he shall repay him the price of his redemption. He shall be with him as a yearly hired servant, and he shall not rule with rigor over him in your sight. And if he is not redeemed in these years, then he shall be released in the year of the Jubilee, he and his children with him. For the children of Israel are servants to me. They are my servants whom I brought out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. So, sounds pretty fair, actually. I mean, they get their time in, they work, you know, if things happen in life, as we all know, and um, they have a bad run of it. But in the end, they are still able to go back home to their family. And um, God's pretty fair. Tomorrow is chapter 26, Promise of the Blessing of Judgments. So come on back. Appreciate you being here. Thanks. God bless.